the head nice and relaxed. I thought at this point South Africa's golden goal, reaching the pinnacle of athletic success. But as early as 2009, since stepping into the limelight on the world athletics stage, questions around her gender have hung over her head. But the ever popular caster Semenya has remained steadfast. I have no time so for those things. And um, for the support, yeah, I would like uh, to thank uh, my fellow South African for this such a fantastic support in uh, the entire world. Uh, what I can say is that uh, I love them and I always do them proud. So, yeah, for that question again, I have no time. In coming weeks, the Court of Arbitration for Sports in Switzerland will decide if female athletes like Castus Amenia must lower their natural levels of testosterone before they can compete in certain track events. Caster, with the backing of athletics bodies, the government and the whole country, has taken the International Association of Athletics Federation, or the IAAF, head-on in this case. That's what Casta is fighting against. She's not fighting her own case. She's fighting the principle of the fact that there is no medical basis for saying that a certain level of testosterone in a female body makes her no longer female anymore. While the international athletics community seems divided over the issue of testosterone levels in female athletes, South Africa has remained united over the past decade in its unwavering support for Casta Semenya was unable to get close to Semenya. The further, the further away from the rest she got, the more confident she got. And that's a fine, fine time for April. And Gould should rightly be proud of her bronze medal. It's the year 2009. Little-known athlete caster Semenya is back on the training track after winning a gold medal for the 800 metres in the 2008 World Junior Championship and another gold medal in the 2008 Commonwealth Youth Games. The stage is set for a star to be born. Yeah, actually, I'm looking for it. And if I can make it to Olympics, uh, yeah, yes, indeed. Everybody want to be an Olympian athlete, and be a, a gold medalist there, silver or bronze. It will be great. Uh, yeah. Casa Semenya kind of broke through on the South African sports scene in the late um, in, in, the, in late 2008, and then she was chosen for the South African team for the 2009 World Championships, which took place in Berlin. She did very well at those World Championships that nobody had ever heard of before, so it was a big story at the time, um, and 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 there were lots of questions asked, and I think Casta's um, story became world news because because of her physical appearance and because particularly I think of her voice the fact that she's got such a deep voice there were many questions that were asked about whether she was biologically different to other women that she was competing against three hours prior to the 2009 world championship 800 meters final in Berlin News breaks that the IAAF asks Caster to take a gender verification test to ascertain whether she is female. Prior to those championships, it subsequently came out that the IAAF actually asked for some kind of gender verification to be done on her. It was done quietly as it should. The South African um, Athletics Federation at the time went ahead and did it and it was submitted and everything supposedly was ab above board. However, somebody in a lab in Berlin after those World Championships um, leaked the information that she had had this test and then questions were asked. Back home, she receives a Euros welcome. Then President of Athletic South Africa, Lena Chuene, stood by Caster to face a litany of media questions. Our gold medalist in 800 meters women, Caster Semenya. Yes, indeed, she's a girl. Yes. You all know that I sit in IWF as a council member of that organization. I resigned. 
You cannot sit in an organization that destroy your own, one of your own. You cannot sit. You cannot sit in an organization where you are endorsing the position that contradicts the constitution of your own country. You cannot see it when one of your own is, has been humiliated. You cannot see it in such an organization. We are here, my granddaughter, to rally around you and to tell you that we are expecting great things from you. To the world out there who conducted those pseudo tests to test our gender, they can stuff their insult. This is our little girl, and nobody's going to perform any tests on her. Don't touch us. Don't touch us, because you dare. You dare. We will repeat it again. If those who want to challenge us continue to insult us using our own people. But the controversy did not die down. Reports surfaced that Athletic South Africa had conducted gender tests on Caster before she left for the World Championship in Berlin and that they had lied to the public. A defiant Chuene sticks to his guns. I did not see that. That's why I'm saying I did not see the results. No, no. You know, now, now, now you're dealing with something else. Told? I want the results. How do I go and fight on the basis of what I'm told? I want the results. No, no. No, no. You are told. Expert medical advice from the team doctor. But I've said it already. I said I said this thing. Uh, that I'm, I'm repeating very clear. One, even if I knew, I was not going to accept. Let me let me be very honest. Yes. No. Yes. If, 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 no. 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 Right. Our view is that they could have handled the matter better. They could have taken the leadership of the country into confidence and avoided lying with regard to their role in this saga. Our findings reveal that ASA took part in the gender verification process of Castor Semen. The tests done in South Africa were conducted at their instance. They intentionally, in our view, deceived South Africans, all of us, the president, Castor and her family. In the years after that, there were continued to be a lot of questions asked and eventually she was forced to stop competing in um, in late 2011 in late 2010 um, and into 2011 and she was asked to take um, hormone therapy to try and lower her levels of androgens and testosterone in particular um, she came back and competed because she fought against those regulations even though she she withdrew from competition for a certain amount of time she fought against those regulations the IAAF was forced to back down she was allowed to participate in the 2012 um, Olympics where she did really well. And in the final, the silver medal goes to Costa Semenya of South Africa. Again, every time she competes on the world stage, and 2012 was probably one of the worst situations, those questions got asked again. And a lot of the time, like in 2012, those questions were asked by fellow athletes, not just by administrators and not just by, by experts in, in, in the field of endocrinology or hyperandrogenism. Semenya bagged her second Olympic gold medal in Rio de Janeiro in 2016. But Casta continued to shine on the world stage. In 2016, she won a gold medal at the Rio Olympics in the 800 meters event. And once again, she received a hero's welcome back home, remaining South Africa's athletics darling. We are proud of our gold medalist, Wait Faniker and Casta Semenya. Casta Semenya is here, our golden girl. The people of Limpopo, the people of South Africa are very proud of you, Casta. We were very worried when you reached that 200 meters, it was like you are going for silver. Kanti yo, abandona. You kept your promise, the people of South Africa, Young and old watch, watch you 
and gave you support when they were tormenting you. If they're tormenting you, there's no place like home. Riaurata Casta, you will be our Casta now and forevermore. Amid huge support locally and abroad, the International Association of Athletics Federation announces new regulations in April last year for female athletes who compete in specific events. The regulations stipulate that the levels of testosterone should be below 5 nanomilligrams per litre to make them eligible to participate. The new regulations would have a direct bearing on Casta Semenya. Momentum. We're all born with it. No matter where life takes us, Momentum protects us and repairs what's been damaged. Momentum Car Insurance gives you up to 30% cash back on your premiums every year, even if you claim. SMS car to 42024 or speak to your financial advisor for a quote. That's why we're here for you. While painting the nursery and worrying about childcare, Lauren has an epiphany. Her medical aid offers some maternity benefit. And 24-7 baby line to talk her through those new parent panic moments. Bring on that mini-me! That's real medical aid. Exciting, isn't it? Gender verification at the Olympics actually began quite soon after women were allowed to start competing at the Olympics and in the 30s a simple physical test was done um, as was probably normal at the time and nobody questioned it. Women were told to strip in front of doctors and a physical examination was all that was necessary. accepted fairly quickly that that wasn't a very accurate way to, to, to make those determinations. Um, in the 50s and then into the early 60s they started as, as medicine developed, they started doing chromosome tests, but there are so many variations in chromosomes, XX and XY are just two of so many combinations that human beings have that they realized also that chromosome tests are also not particularly accurate. In the 90s, there were certain there were certain chromosome and those kind of tests that were continuing to be done. Um, there was a Spanish athlete in uh, 1986 um, by the name of Maria Jose um, Pino, and she was she was um, barred from from competing because she failed a chromosome test. And she was actually sent a letter saying that, that they weren't barring her from competing, but she had to compete in men's events, even though she was physically a woman and she self-identified as a woman. Now the Indian track and field athlete Santi Sandujarajan has been stripped of an Asian Games women's 800m silver medal after failing a gender test in Doha. The Indian Olympic Association confirmed this yesterday. The 25-year-old was asked to undergo a femininity test in the Qatari capital after the December 9 race of the Olympic Council of Asia has directed India to return the medal upon the recommendation of its medal committee, an IOA statement said. Over the last decade, sex tests have been done on a number of female athletes and in fact in 2013, four unnamed women actually underwent surgery, corrective surgery, um, because of tests that had been done on them. They were all from developing countries, which is, um, which is an interesting uh, fact in and of itself. Head of Legal Advocacy and Litigation with Sonke Gender Justice, Kayan Leung, says there seems to be a profile of women who are singled out by the IAAF's latest regulations. It almost seems like 
when you're, you're looking at athletes that come from a certain geographical area that have natural um, talents that are, are physiologically built differently. We're not pointing fingers at, for example, Usain Bolt for having longer legs in, in his races or, or Michael Phelps, for example, you know, with his impressive wingspan and his, his massive arms, you know, with his broader strokes and swimming. So it would seem that it's, it's the, the rulings are almost targeted at specific individuals of geographic locations which deals with the intersectionality of possibly discrimination against athletes from the global south. In 2016, the IAAF requested that Indian track athlete Duti Chand undergo tests to determine her testosterone levels. Duti Chand was first picked for the Commonwealth Games in 20, 2014. She was only 18 years old at the time. The Indian athletics authorities withdrew her from the team saying that she was hyperandrogenous. She fought that and she also fought the IAAF regulations and it's partly because of Duty's fight that Casta found herself in the situation that she found herself a few weeks ago where she appeared before the, the Court of Arbitration for Sport. More than Olympic Games 800 meters champion Casta Semenya will challenge the IAAF's testosterone level ruling at the Court of Arbitration of Sport in Switzerland today. Last year, athletics world body con the athletics world body controversially ruled that the testosterone levels of female middle distant runners should be restricted. The rule will apply to women in track events from the 400 meters up to a mile. Semenya bagged her second Olympic gold medal in Rio de Janeiro in 2016. She's also a three-time world champion and boasts three consecutive Diamond League trophies in the 800 meters, leaving her unbeaten in the event for three years. A proud South African, she enjoys a massive following locally and huge support wherever she goes. But Semenya has had to face questions over her gender for many years. She has, however, always had the backing of her compatriots and fellow sports stars. Golden girl, there are a lot of international norms that every state that is signatory um, is bound by. Um, and that would include the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the International Covenant on Socio Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, um, which specifically says under Common Article 3 that you cannot discriminate between men and women and that everyone is supposed to enjoy equal rights. So by that premise, the IWAF is also bound to that. No tests have been done in that time amongst male athletes. The argument, if you put that point to the IWAF and to the IOC, by the way, is that the, the men's events are in essence open categories. So if I, as a woman, wanted to compete in a men's event, I can. There's nothing to stop me from doing that. So they don't do the tests because it doesn't matter. Caster's case has drawn support from civil rights movements across the globe. And in recent days, the United Nations Human Rights Council adopted a resolution to defend Caster's rights to participate in sport. Time is the definitive show that brings you the lowdown on cinema. Music. Art. Recently, 50 makeup artists from around the country watched their art pieces grace the stage in the annual Fantasia body painting competition held in Johannesburg. The results quite revealing. And sport. Drop of goal. He's got it. It's the post. Ella goes in top and it will score. Oh, what a try. Magnificent play from the Australian 5-8. Catch prime time on SABC Encore, DSTV Channel 156, Timeless. We've heard it many times from female entrepreneurs that they aren't taken seriously and Future Females is a worldwide network of women. So we're creating a platform where these women come and they collaborate and they meet each other. Have the uh, Civil Aviation Authority announced when they'll be making some announcement with regard to findings? The Chief Executive Officer of Ethiopian Airlines he said they do not even know the magnitude of the situation. Bring us up to speed with regard to the latest developments. We now know there was a football official, there was a journalists to our university professors. Coco said 
His hands are clean and his detractors have ulterior motives. South Africans have been so legally that Machila Koko had conflict of interest. Our election website here on SABC is now live. Despite the ongoing scrutiny into her gender, Caster Semenya has continued to rise in her athletic career, taking gold last year in the World Championships 800 meters race. She has decided to take on the IAAF's new regulations. This time, Cast has the full support of Athletic South Africa, the South African government, and the public at large. Caster Semenya, huge credit though. From the side of uh, your Casta Semenya team, uh, we have a footprint there in terms of supporting to make sure that they are able uh, to put together their case. And the minister appointed a high-level panel and that includes all parties to this response, uh, including uh, Casta's uh, legal representatives and Athletic South Africa and its legal representation. And we also roped in a number of experts. Welcome back. Here's a sport. Casta Semenya has won the first small battle in her fight against the IAAF. Semenya's lawyers argue that the new regulation is objectionable on numerous grounds. This includes compelling women with no prior health complaints to undergo unnecessary medical interventions to lower their testosterone levels, something that's produced naturally, heightening the unfair scrutiny that women athletes already experience, and exacerbating discrimination against women in sport who are failing to conform to the IAAF's gender norms. It's uh, unusual and unprecedented, as I said, because we never had such a, a case at CAS. Uh, what's going to happen, I'm not able to say, but uh, it will be important for sure. In email correspondence with special assignment, Caster's legal team, Athletic South Africa and the South African Sport Confederation and Olympic Committee declined to be interviewed on the matter while it's still before the Court of Arbitration of Sports in Switzerland, fearing it might jeopardize the case. Uh, we need to go through here in one minute, 27 seconds through the line. It has slowed a bit, said during press conferences. She wants those two women behind her to work with her and not make it a tactical race. Because Professor of Applied Sports Science at the St. Mary's University in London, John Brewer, says higher testosterone levels will give athletes a certain advantage. There are lots of scientific papers on the physiological and performance benefits of testosterone and that's that's the key issue with this case. We know that individuals with high levels of testosterone will tend to have higher amounts of muscle, they'll therefore be stronger and more powerful. And of course in many sports, particularly sports where power and strength are really important, those individuals will have an advantage over their competitors. Uh, we know that Castor Semenya has a condition called hyperandrogenism. As a result of that, she produces more testosterone and clearly the, the implication therefore is that she has uh, elevated her, her strength and her power to a level that gives her an artificial advantage over her competitors. Now what she is claiming and her legal team are claiming, quite understandably, is that that's, that's a natural condition. It's no different to having longer legs, higher statue, larger lungs and so on, which many elite athletes will also have. Um, and therefore she shouldn't be disadvantaged by having to take medication to reduce that testosterone level. But the key case here will hinge on whether uh, testosterone is seen as performance enhancing and whether the levels that she actually has will give her a real advantage over her, her other competitors. The South African government support campaign for Caster makes use of the slogan, Naturally Superior. Many social commentators have called the IAAF's motives sexist and racist. Professor John Brewer says the case that centers on female athletes' performance is complicated. The, the, the whole case really is one that's incredibly difficult and I, I do feel that there will end up being no winners with this um, because at the same time if you listen to, to Lord Coe, he will speak very eloquently about females who don't have hyperandrogenism but they still have all of those other characteristics and 
he wants them to have an environment where it's effectively a level playing field where they can do well in sport and still have the, the, the best possible chance of succeeding at the highest level. So I can understand why the IAAF overturned the duty channel ruling, um, but at the same time I can absolutely understand why Casta Semenya and others with the same condition still want to retain quite rightly that ability to compete in sport and to take part in Olympic Games and, and World Athletics Championships. So it's a very difficult dilemma. I think for the authorities and the Court of Arbitration for Sport who, who now have to face this and, and to come up with the right, uh, the right solution. And you see it's Throughout her journey, Caster has remained steadfast with only one passion and one goal, to keep on running. Caster Semenya has been extraordinary in the way she's actually dealt with all of this. Um, it's the sort of class and elegance that she has, that she's shown through a decade of her private life being focused on the way that it is, has been absolutely amazing. She's one of the strongest people I've ever met. I've done a couple of interviews with her and, it, and particularly at events and internationally as well, where she's competed and she's come under this incredible focus and she just deals with it. Her, her, she truly does internalize a statement that she's made often. If they have a problem, that's their problem, not mine. And she repeats that over and over again. The Court of Arbitration for Sport in Switzerland will rule on the matter in the next coming weeks. While the sports community and world at large await the outcome of the groundbreaking case, the once young girl from a small Limpopo town in South Africa who fostered big athletic dreams will continue her quest to dominate the world's sports stage.